Hello students! Welcome to another day of learning and fun. I am teacher Valerie and I will help you in understanding your English 8 modules. But before we start the lesson, let's have a short drill regarding our topic last time. Are you ready? Let's start! Number 1. I blank go to the party last night because I was sick. What do you think is the correct answer? Is it cannot or could not? Correct. The answer is could not. Let's have number two. My sister blank swim last year, but now she cannot. What do you think is the correct answer? Is it might not or could? Very good. The answer is could. Let's have the last drill. Ellie Blank ride a bicycle. She rides it to school every day. The choices are can or me? What do you think is the correct answer? Very good. The answer is can. Now let's have a short recap of what modal is. Again, modals are auxiliary or helping verb. They may be used in expressing ability, kakayahan, Permission o panghingi ng permiso, obligation or obligasyon o kailangan gawin, and prohibition o mga ipinagbabawal. Now, here are the different functions of the following modal verbs. Shall, should, and ought to. We use the modal shall if you would like to offer assistance or polite suggestion. We use this if we are sure of a positive answer. The format is shall plus the subject plus the base form of the verb. Example, shall we go for a walk? Here, you are expecting that the answer will be yes. That is why you use the modal shall. Next, we have the modal should. Should can also be used in offering assistance or a polite suggestion. But, we use mod the modal should if we are not that sure to get a positive answer. Example, should I call a doctor? So here, the answer may be yes or may be, may be no. That is why we use the modal should. Next, should and should not can also be used in expressing a prediction or expectation about something that will happen. Example, the proposal should be finished on time, meaning to say the speaker is expecting that the proposal will be finished on time. Second example, I shouldn't be late. The train usually arrives on time. The speaker here is expecting or predicting that he should not be late because the train usually arrives on time. Also, we can use the modal should or ought to if we want to give advice. Example, you should check that document before you send it out. Number two, you ought to have your car serviced before the winter. Here, you are offering an advice to someone. Also, aside from giving advice, you can also use should or should not if you notice something that you think is wrong or unacceptable. We use the word should not 
plus the base form of the verb. Example, James should not teach him words like those. Next, we have the modals must, have to, need to, don't have to, and need not to. We use must or have to or need to if it is a necessity or a requirement. And the tense of the verb is in the present or in the future tense. So we have the, we have the word must, have to, need to, plus the base form of the verb. Example, you must have a passport to cross the border. Here, there is a need for you to have a passport. It is a necessity or a requirement. That is why you use the modal must. Next, Elizabeth has to apply for her visa by March 10. The third, I need to drop by his room to pick up a book. All these examples expresses a necessity or a requirement. Now, if the tense of the verb is in the past tense, we use the modals had to or needed to plus the base form of the verb. Example, I had to work late last night, meaning the action happened in the past or last night. Second example, I needed to drink a few cups of coffee in order to stay awake, meaning to say the action happened in the past. That is why we use the verb needed to. And since it is a necessity or a requirement, it is also a modal. Next, we use the modal must if we are 100% certain of a certain thing. Say for example, Thomas has lived in Paris for years. His French must be very good. Here, you are 100% sure that Thomas is good in French because he has lived in Paris, in Paris for years. Next, we can also use must and have to if we would like to persuade someone about something. Example, you must try this wine. It's excellent. Here, you are persuading someone to try the wine because it is excellent. Number two, you have to visit us while you are in town. You are encouraging someone to visit you. That is why you use the modal must and have to. Also, we can use must and have to if we are prohibiting something or forbidding something. We just need to add the word not. Example, you must not drive over the speed limit. Meaning to say, you are not allowed or you are forbidden to drive over the speed limit. Next, you must not leave medicines where children can get to them. Next, will and would. We use these modas if we are requesting politely or stating a statement in a polite manner. The format is will or would plus the base form of the verb. Example, will you please take the trash out? Here, you are politely requesting someone to take the trash out. Next, would you mind if I sat here? Here, you are requesting or stating a statement Asking if it is alright for you to sit beside him or her. Next is the modal would. We use the modal would 
in expressing a habitual past action. The format is would or would not plus the base form of the verb. Example, when I was a child, I would spend hours playing with my train set. Meaning to say, the action happened in the past when the speaker was still a child. Number two, Peter would not eat broccoli when he was a kid. He loves it now. And that's it. We are done with modals. I hope you learned something from me. If you have any questions or queries, do not hesitate to message me, Teacher Valerie, or your English teachers. That's all. Have a nice day.